Welcome back, guys. This is the GSL Code A, and we are about to wrap this whole thing up. MC will be knocked out if he does not win this game and the next one. That's right. It's 2-1 to one for Trust right now. But do you know how quickly 2-1 to one be can become 2-2? Two to two? Very quickly, within, within the span of one game. Yeah. It could become 2-2. Two to two. That's how And that's, that's even. That's one game best of one. Anyone can win best of one. It's true. Put Tasis down that booth, man. He's going to take some PvP's every now and then. I'll take some PvP's off FC. Yeah, man. No problem. Sometimes you don't find where that, that Oracle's hidden. That's what I do, man. Yeah. It's a good thing I'm not that in that booth. That Oracle flies in his base. He doesn't even know it's an Oracle because he has make, a fake mustache on. we, <laughs> we got to make the... Uh, the the uh, the TSL and it's the Tasteless Starcraft League where I play and cast. Wow! It's like all about me and I'm like beating. I'm like taking out MC and every other great player and I'm just I'm like now watch carefully as I attack into his expansion. I'm like play by play and how I'm killing each of his units. <laughs> I can't wait till the drama where it comes out. You have 400 percent of health on all your units. Yeah. MC. <laughs> they found out my opponents have to play with oven mittens on. They're like this whole thing is a sham. <laughs> They don't get a shot of the players in the booth. The players are like in there in straight jackets with duct tape on their mouth. While I'm like playing. I'm killing their CJ workers. They, they've only got six of them. They couldn't make anymore. <laughs> Every minute, all the keys on their keyboard change places. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning does not strike three times. Excellent sign. Our That's a good quote right there. Thank you for coming down, guys on our final day of Code A. Because after this, we're going to be done with Code A. Yeah. That's not even going to be a letter in the alphabet anymore. We're we'll done. Right. It's we're going to have to start really using hard. symbols like, welcome to Code, question mark. It's like, what's your name? My name is Ertosis. <laughs> no, your real name. Dun. Dun. We have, we have, <laughs> we have the gate finishing. Uh, no, we don't. I don't know what's going on in this game. We have the, we have the game like halfway done. What, what game is this? What are we doing here? It's been a close series so far. Oh, the Cyber Next Core. Is that almost done? Is that almost done? No, I guess we still got to talk about random stuff. Yo, this game could go really funny. Like, this map is the one map where you see, like, the weirdest games because... If you live to a certain point and neither of you are super close to dead, everyone just drops everything goes Tempest. Yeah, because you yeah. like have an arc that no one can break. So you're like, well, I guess I just need a bunch of tempest, and then it's just mass tempest. We're gonna go mass, mass tempest, tempest, and then figure out what to do from there. Yeah, and that that way of playing PvP actually isn't fully mapped out because we don't get enough games here, and this is the only map that it happens on. <laughs> so it's like kind of, I would love to see that happen though. I I, I doubt it would. MC yeah, just has it. the killer instinct. He doesn't want games to go like that. Like that last game with those slight edges going four gate plus observers like so brave i have to say some of the builds mc's done seem a bit dicier than what we would expect in a you know in a series well, of pvps i mean he's he, the guy like has such courage it's crazy it's like he's my john snow protoss or something he is but he knows something he does. Codes is coming. <laughs> it knows. is coming. Yeah. Oh, all right. Stargate right off the bat here from Trust. Nerds are coming. That's what comes with Codes. Oh, yeah? Nerds will rip your arms from your sockets. <laughs> Feasting on the, the blood of walkers. baby nerds. The nerd walkers, yeah. Mm. Actually, they're, they're not even nerd walkers. They don't walk at all. They sit and play StarCraft mm. all day. They the nerds, the other nerds to yeah. to do so. Some nerds at his computer is going. It's so cold. My hands are cold. I can't feel the keyboard anymore. Uh oh, it's the nerd walkers. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're pretty weak, unfortunately. Because Samuel Tarly, the League of Legends like player, killed one. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's nothing. That one you got 32 nerd walkers coming. Uh, that's true. They say the only way to stop them is fire. They're wrong. It's sunlight. <laughs> Same they thing. They hate sunlight. Like, ah! All right. We got 
Mothership Corps coming here. Ooh, oh, that's all he had to see. Okay, that's, that's all he had to know. Okay, so uh, this is cool because we're going to see this is Oracle into Blink versus straight Blink. And uh, I mean, generally, you're just going to have to expand uh, as, as the straight Blink player. But it's really tricky how many uh, stalkers that you need to make because the uh, Oracle Blink player, oh, as long as he doesn't lose the Oracle, if he loses the Oracle, that's really terribly bad. Okay, he keeps it alive. But uh, the Oracle Blink player, like, normally will over Stalker and try to try to hit you because he can, like, force Nexus Cannons with the Oracle and stuff. It's Yeah, it gets it, like a little, a, tricky, a little, like, window timing in there, yeah. come in there and punish you. you. You'd think that straight Blink beats Oracle Blink because of spending 300 ga or almost for the... The Oracle just so much gas coming out, but uh, it lost. isn't it isn't so cut and dry. You don't quite have enough stalkers too at that point in time yeah. to really maximize <gasps> on it. Uh oh, MC is going DTs. Yeah. Now it might. I, I don't want to read too much into this, but it might be kind of clear that MC is going DTs because he ran forward like that with the stalkers. This is sort of hmm. sometimes when you see people do that. It's 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 so very much like. By the way, I'm. Stalkers are outside your base. Mm. Keep that in mind that it, it can be a little bit of a tell. Yeah. As crazy as that sounds. Well, let's see here. He does have that Oracle right now at home. Yeah, he cannot lose this mm. Oracle. It's really actually very simple. Trust has to keep the Oracle alive or the DTs are going to kill him. Now, he doesn't yeah. know that these DTs are coming. Where is his Oracle? Is it just sitting at home? I think it is. Oh, man. he found the uh, that pylon. Hey, what are you doing? Kill the pylon? What? Maybe he's maybe I think he suspects it's going to be DTs. You think he wants to bait in the DTs? He might if he if he's on that level. That's pretty sick. Okay, nope. now he he walks in. He's maybe he was waiting in case uh, the units were coming right then. But there is another pylon here. DT on his way. You can see the stalkers are actually MC put those two stalkers over there on the far left to actually catch the oracle. Oh, why is that moving out? Oh! Well, that is pretty important, guys. Okay, he's actually just holding on to the DTs. Hasn't moved out yet. Uh, all right, it's a base trade. No! Oh! All right, GG. We're going into game number four. Sick. This is, uh, that's all she wrote. Yeah, this should not end up working out for Trust. Can I just say, this was the best PvP I ever casted. <laughs> this one right here? Four years of cast, <laughs> this was the best one. This one right here. Oh, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome, right? Okay. Um, well, guys. <laughs> the moral... Look at that Nexus cannon. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> the moral of the story is detection is important. Yeah. I feel like this should be a children's program. Like, what did we all learn? Always have detection. Hugging is important. Sharing is important. Always have detection. Oh my god, look at this. Wow, okay. The Nexus isn't dead. It's a lot of lost mining time, I would say. Certainly is. Less probes, too. Way less stalkers. <laughs> this is the, uh, the attack move win here for MC. Yeah. And he's going to just blink right on top of all this. He doesn't need to waste any time here. Did I MC like get angry to win this game, Tasteless? That's what, exactly what happened. He should right-click on the Nexus. I think that's the best move. GG. All right. 2-2. All right. Two, two. All right. Not our most sophisticated game. The no. loss is very straightforward. Yeah. If you can't see the invisible units, you cannot stop them. Yeah. MC, uh... I guess it's going to take a little break after that. I think so. Pressure mounting here for Trust. Well, I, I don't think he's going to win, Tasteless. I don't think it's going to happen. Like, It's got to be pretty discouraging. You can see him closing his eyes. Even after his first loss, he, he like shook his head kind of defeatedly when we uh, put the camera on him. And here he is, another loss there. That's a, that's a frustrating one because he had a fine build. His build was quite good against what he was going against. Uh, he had, in fact, quite a gas advantage. If he had kept the Oracle at home, then likely he would have been able to win that game. Uh, his counterattack would be so strong. This is an important moment here. Yeah. One of the best coaches in StarCraft 2. Maybe the best coach in StarCraft Probably 2. Probably the best. Probably the best coach in StarCraft 2 in the booth right now. Give him the words that he needs. The head pats he needs. The reassuring head pat. The head pat. 
that I wish that's my father would get me right now. <laughs> well, that's why every time we cast, Artosis actually sits on the ground and I pat his head <laughs> through the whole cast. All right, some support here for the Jets. Not for Ducks, though. No, not for, Just not poor for Ducks. ducks. <laughs> The ducks are watching this like, what the hell, Some man? ducks are just like, wah, wah, wah. There's going to be so a man. duck down here in the, later on in the season. He's going to yeah. migrate in to watch the I mean, GSL. Justin, there's He's a duck a with his little wings out writing on Reddit right now yeah. about this. Very angry. Our ducks. Our ducks. <laughs> yeah. Our duck craft is where he's writing at. Does anyone else think... Well, what is it? is it? Quack, 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 quack. And then there's like a below him and all bold. And there's quack, quack, there's quack, another quack, 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 slash sarcasm. <laughs> Someone's like TLDR, quack, quack. Like, so. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> quack, quack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's duck cap if you didn't get it. Oh, I got it. No, I got it. Uh, <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> We have uh, a small break for now. Uh, I believe MC, I, I don't, we don't know what the break is for, but probably using the restroom or uh, maybe going and talking to his own coach. Um, it's all going to be down to this one game. I think you're right. I think there's a very strong chance that MC can win this, especially the fact that um, you know these, the series started out with MC getting smashed. Then it was a little bit closer, mm -hmm. but he still lost. Game three, it was close. He came back. Then game four, he crushed him. Uh, so it looks like... MC, just like any good player in a best of five, is uh, adapting and improving. Yep. And that's why I think the best of five is the best way to handle code A. I, I agree with you on that. Because if it was a best of three, MC would not be in code S. But as is, has a decent chance here. As long as he's not a duck. As long as he's not a duck. Imagine that, that alternate universe. MC's a duck. 31 pro gamers and a duck who just cannot be stopped at StarCraft. Well, you know what? I, I would actually feel better about the world if he was a duck, because then all of those duck lip selfies would make sense. Ah, that would, yeah. Our final game for the GSL Code A is loaded up. MC against Trust for that last spot in the GSL Code S. Down here. Trig MC. And in the upper right. CJ Antus Trust. Do we know the age of Trust, actually? 18. 18? You just like, make it up. <laughs> yeah. You're like 41. I'm like, okay. I don't know. I'm like, okay, he's 41 years old. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let me turn over my Trust baseball card and check that, Tasteless. <laughs> we need those. We need those, you're man. Like, well, you have a cell phone. I actually could easily check on the internet in two <laughs> seconds. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> he, uh, he looks pretty young. Yeah, he looks he pretty green. Yeah. How old is MC? He's 300,000 years old. It seems so, yeah. man. The amount of games that I've He's casted He's older him. than the oldest tree. <laughs> MC has been around since the dinosaurs, and in fact, if not for MC, the dinosaurs might still be here. <laughs> <laughs> MC wiped out the dinosaurs. Yeah. You think a comet hit Earth? <laughs> no. That's when MC figured out what force fields did, Tasis. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of these epic Nesty <laughs> jokes. This Misses is so one force field, man, and <laughs> everything's different. Oh, man. How many centuries did that take? That was a lot. Well, let's see. Two million years divided by a hundred. <laughs> Math joke. <laughs> oh. I can't wait to see what the builds are going to be exactly. Uh, we've seen pretty heavy usage of oracles in a blink play here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to back out of that now. Look at this probe. Now, this probe is a monster. Jeez Louise. That probe is a hooligan. I feel like I'm watching Kingdom. Oh, man, his probe was so good in Brood War. I called him like the devil probe or something. Yeah, it just did right so now. much damage. In StarCraft 1, one probe could do so much damage. You got to keep in mind you only had one gas in that, so they could take your gas. Yeah. They could do manor pylons, which you don't see in StarCraft 2 anymore. Look, um, he yeah. could, he could actually harass your SCVs while they're making. He could put pylons where the add-on was for the factory because you had to mech in that matchup. He could do other things like mine minerals, mine a gas uh, after he's mined a mineral from the, ga the gas geyser he's taken. I mean, 
harass the depot. Yeah. Actually use a pylon to force his way through a wall in if you do it just right. I mean, it was pretty pretty ridiculous. It, it certainly was. I, you know, I, I love the Adept. I think it's a great unit idea, but you want Protoss to be able to harass correctly in Legacy of the Void? Just give him the StarCraft 1 yeah, probe. Yeah, give him the StarCraft Make 1 probe. Make it a gateway unit. <laughs> I promise you people will make it. <laughs> that thing will go up, it'll kill two SCVs, it will leave proxy DT tech, and then you will die to DTs. It'll be good at harassing a Marine, too. Oh, my the God. Zealot. Yeah, it's It'd take a Marine out. Yeah. Body that Marine. <laughs> okay, it's Blink versus Blink. I believe it's completely mirrored built here. Yeah, yeah, it's super close. Like, super just close. slightly close different enough, timing on gates and stuff. But uh, really, really close builds at the moment. It looks like uh, Trust is not sending his uh, Mothership error all the way, uh, and thus is going for the Robo, because this is like, it's kind of the balance that you have to decide on, right? Is right. Uh, Do you go for the Robo uh, for safety? Do you risk that part? Do you scout the Mothership core? And thing is, be okay, so he's actually going to get to scout. Now, if he sees Blink plus Robo, now he doesn't really get to see very much. He did see three stalkers, which is a decent amount of intel. But I guess it's not really enough for him to, to cancel the robo. Oh, funny. Uh, Tress is just going to run in here and see if he can see anything on his own. He does only see three stalkers. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, Trust going to go for the expand. MC, throughout most of these games, has been the guy going hard in the paint with the rushes. Mm -hmm. So let's see how he um, how he does now. Against this, because MC's, it's been about what's well, been literally 50 50 with his wins here. So if he doesn't make a Nexus pretty quickly, it is up to MC to end this like yeah. now. And he has to attack in there and kill that Nexus. He's on three gate against three gate. He's not even really close enough right now. The Nexus cannon should be able to buy him time. And as long as Trust is chrono boosting out stalkers, like. Also, keep in mind that MC uh, can blink into the main. Yes, that is it's actually which is very pretty important, important because a lot of games just end mm -hmm. uh, when stuff like that happens. Look at how many stalkers MC is making. I feel like this almost dictates that we need to see a misplay from Truss. Like, if he just continually makes stalkers, but he's, he's not. He's, I mean, he's you only don't got an observer, by the way. You don't want to make stalkers forever, but he doesn't have enough intel to stop. No, right? no immortal, by the way, here for Truss just yet. Okay, he's moving out. Okay, it's twelve to seven. That's a big, big difference. MC might be able to bust down the front door. It's possible. The Nexus is done, though. Uh, he needs to chrono. Wow, oh. I'm surprised he blinked on top of that. Well, yeah. now well, he's... if you have that many stalkers you didn't go blink, I think that you made a terrible mistake. <laughs> but he does see the sheer number of stalkers mm. there. That's pretty scary. Yeah. Um, well, all again, guys, all Trust has to do is survive the attack for now. Since MC is expanding behind this. Ooh! Oh! oh! Got that observer. MC in good shape. Well, that is actually really, really nice to win that little tiny observer war. But now MC realizes that, in fact, they have gone for the same text. He doesn't have quite enough of an advantage to really push into there against a finished Nexus with Nexus Cannon. And his Nexus is a lot slower. So he does throw down a really quick forge. That's one decent way to try to fight back in the long term. Yep, get those upgrades. Uh, we have a forge now, a little bit later. So there's going to be a small window where MC might have a stronger mm -hmm. army uh, as far as upgrades go. It is 28 workers to 34. So Ooh. Trust is going to be getting uh, more as this game goes on longer. So you know, you do got to acknowledge here that that, even that slight worker lead, he's going to be able to get, you know, more tech, mm -hmm. more of everything else. So yeah. We'll, the we'll the advantage goes to trust. Yeah, for is sure. It, is it as big an advantage as the other games that MC lost, though? No. Yeah, I don't think so. I no. think it's a little bit less. And MC fought back pretty well during those games, so I'm not counting him out by any means. Okay. And look. MC comes up. Now this is Who has more probes now? Tasteless. Well, still trust, but <laughs> not by as yeah. many. Yeah. Well, those little uh, victories is what is going to bring MC back into this. Shaving off a few probes here and there, mm -hmm. uh, getting in a, an immortal snipe, dismantling you know that the tech that uh, Trust has right now. Trust sticking to what he knows, just keep massing up, macroing up, continuing to make two probes at a time.
uh, getting the attack upgrade, and now he's going to have the Colossus tech that's going to be a little bit faster. Oh my god, that's huge. Is he going to blink on top of him? Ooh. Oh, yes he is. Oh, that's bad. That's really, really bad, Tasteless. He's going to blink right up there again. This is just nasty. It's it's so brutal when you see what happens when one guy yeah. gets a lead in a stalker fight, he's going to blink away. It's crazy, the difference. Yeah. Okay, so well, that was Well, that was the little victory that uh, Tress needed to cement. Yeah. The further late expanding behind this, I love it. Yeah, that's really good. For him to just take a third right there, that's going to be something that's almost impossible to punish when you've lost that many stalkers. You're afraid to even go on the map again. If, you're, if your opponent has more stalkers, you just like any open field engagement, he's going to be able to take you on this early in the game. Stalkers no. are like everything for, the, for that type of situation. Nothing cuter than watching a sentry chase an observer, by the way. Yeah. I feel like it's watching a puppy and a kitten play with each other. <laughs> if they live long enough, the puppy will win, right? <laughs> I think so. Now, the Colossus tech has started. Uh, note how cautious Truss is being. He's actually gone back home. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't want any surprises from stalkers. Mm -hmm. might, Smart move. might be better to stay on the map, but he doesn't want to miss out on anything. He's got, he doesn't have proper observers placed everywhere, so yeah. it's possible MC sneaks by him, and that would be certainly something MC would try to pull on you. Certainly the case. Let's catch uh, that hallucination before it can scout that third base. So MC isn't sure of how far behind he is right now. I, I'm sure that he's aware that he's a, a bit behind at least after losing that many stalkers, but uh, probably doesn't realize that Trust got that third up uh, finishing as he started his. How often do we see guys shutting down every hallucinated Phoenix? Pretty impressive. This here. often? This often. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's pretty impressive, man. He's really shutting down every avenue for intel, anything. Yeah, he's got both watchtowers right now. Good pylon placement. Even has something down in the bottom right. Like, Trust just has complete vision of everything, really. Oh, it's oh gonna be, be careful there. Yeah, I, I guess his army's okay to be out right now, but, uh, you know, has to be careful. Doesn't want to lose a single unit at this point. You know, MC is still doing an okay job of coming back here. He's still way down in probes, seven probes down at the moment. Uh, army supply a little bit down, but not too, too much. Uh, like, a lot of the army supply is actually down is in are those stalkers. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually an important thing to take into consideration. Definitely stalkers are worth something, but they're later game less. Not as important as the Immortals or Colossi here. Yeah. In, in PvP, a lot of times they're kind of delegated to, like, what roaches are against Terran or Protoss late game, where it's like, oh, yeah. this for the supply, they aren't quite what you want. Do you think MC is going to attack when he gets his plus one? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I think I think he's got to sit back a little bit longer. Well, Zealot Legs is going to finish it around the same time. They're both yeah. in the Templar decks. It's like everything's basically the same except for the lead here for for Trust. Mm. Trust is actually getting a Stargate right now. Oh yeah, I didn't so actually notice that. Good it call. looks like he wants to go into uh, Tempest play. Nice little snipe here on a few units. That once again should force MC to reconsider any attacks he may be thinking about. But uh, if Trust gets into Tempest, like there's a big window though when you switch to Tempest where you're spending ridiculous amounts of money for something that isn't out yet. And even yeah. on like the first Tempest or the first two Tempests, sometimes, you know, those will be... No, I mean, they do start to swing the battle pretty Did we ever see a War Prism get made here? Uh, that's how he so. won the last game. I would assume this would be a great way to win this game, too. It's in a War Prism mm -hmm. into the main and warp in Zealots or something. I bet you when he actually decides to move out for an attack, that'll... That's a good time for him to probably That'll make come. one. Like, I don't think he can afford warping too many units right now for harassment, just because he's lost. He's like hemorrhaged units left and right. What do you think about the fourth base while going for Tempest? I feel like that might be too dicey, especially on this map. Yeah, that seems a little bit greedy. Actually, it does seem a little the bit. The first greedy. really greedy thing I think we've seen Trust do here. It, you know, I the only way I can look at that and appreciate it is by thinking of like ZVP, where you take two bases when you're going Muta. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. okay, they can kill one, but I'll still have an extra. It's like, okay, if they do come up, and if he does come up, because this is the one weak moment for the Tempest switch, is like right about now. You have spare minerals anyways in that moment. but Yeah, and like but maybe I he kills your third, but maybe your fourth Nexus just gets skipped and you're still on three base. Because if you go down to two base, then it becomes very difficult. All right, well. Two gates. MC's Walling that off. It's going to be harder to harass that with Zealots. 
Two Tempests are out. And I assume we're going to have two more made here as well. Tempest can be a little bit handy, too, in these big endgame fights, because mm. Stalkers are usually not the not the remaining unit. That's yeah, fighting. yeah, definitely not. It's usually just, you know, Colossi. Yeah. It's, uh, each other. They are not the greatest. Like, they beat Tempest, but you don't really want them in your composition, so. Especially when the follow-up, uh, after all, Colossi are lost is Zealot Archon. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, well. MC's windows are shutting right now. Okay, okay, he sees that Tempest are being made. Now, what do we see him do from here? 182 to 182, by the way. Neck and neck as far as supplies go. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 69 workers to 67, so it's not it's not a big difference, really. It's like one extra zealot then uh, for MC. Again, if you're just not joining us, this is the last game here for Code A. There's only one spot left for Code S. Everybody most likely betting on MC here, mm. but in fact, it was Trust who won the first two games, and he's in the lead uh, by a small margin. Yeah, MC is kind of on the ropes, but look at this. He's pumping out Immortals. Uh, he really wants to just slaughter the ground army and then maybe rally into, into the Tempest. I think that that's his plan here. We'll see if it ends up working. Well, he saw that pylon. MC should know the attack's about to begin. Forking out Hallucinated Colo uh, Phoenix, excuse me. I'd love to see a unit count right now. I want to see exact numbers. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, Already almost loses a Colossus. He's pulled that one back. It's going to die in one volley. Z almost went in there and tried to get that one. The Archons are going to try to come up over here underneath the Tempest. He hey. can't afford Okay, that's a good time warp. It's a really good time warp. Hey, he's actually he's kind of a little bit. It's a uh, lot of Immortals up front. Those Immortals and actually can do some real work. Look at this, a terrible position for Trust at the bottom of this ramp. Those Archons really on the side doing a lot as well, but you know what? The angle's just too good. It's yeah. actually just a bigger concave here. Uh, I believe MC is actually out of this tournament. Oh my god. MC this season is not looking like a Code S caliber uh, player. No. And Trust is going to continue to move down here now. It's Zealot Archon all the way from here. He could just go down here and stamp out all of these next eye. Yeah, there's nothing really to do here. He's making, or I guess, no, I mean, he's making Colossus and <laughs> Archons. Like, there's no way that he can actually take out this composition. It's way too strong, way too many units over here as well. A 50 supplier lead in the army. Wow, I mean, just completely running over this army here. Uh, now, keep in mind, there's also Zealots killing the probes down there at the bottom right. Three Colossi and not really a good angle to come in here and do any more damage. That is it. That's the nail in the coffin. MC is out of the GSL. <laughs> I'm also the GSL Code S. I'm like, no, we're in Code A. And there you go. Code and S. that's why you need to be on a Kespa team. That's right. It's uh, These great. foreign teams are just not as good. No. I mean, you get someone like Tress, he trains hard, he's got a great coach. And, I mean, he he played really well, guys. He did. Um, MC, Look, MC was actually poor, played well, too. Uh, MC got behind three times. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? Like, he, he had the bad end of builds a lot today. He did. Hey, you know, MC did not do a bad job. He, he was managing to, to really hang on in some of these moments that he just was so far back. Yeah. Man, but... Um, I gotta say, trust definitely. I, I, we don't know how much research he was able to do ahead of time, but it seemed like he came oh, in he here definitely. pretty prepared. Yeah, he knew everything about MC. I think Coach Park did a great job talking to him. Whatever he said to him, no and, doubt, uh, calmed him down, before. told him to stick to his guns, play the strategy as intended. I think everything was pretty much pre-planned with a few if this then that's. Be my guess for a player like him with less experience on stage. Well, uh, I think we got a nice. Dark Horse here for the Code S. Trust beating oh, the boss toss. I'm interested to see how Trust and Panic do. Two, yeah. two kind of young Protosses you don't expect to be in Code S, but they both made it there beating some strong Protosses and uh, playing some strong PvP. Nicely done there. Um, kind of sad to see MC go. Yeah, of Definitely course. Definitely one of the fan favorites. MC is always a player you want to, to advance and to watch. <sighs> the results today. Uh, interesting. I think that last PvP definitely our best uh, best game in the series. We've had a lot of great PvPs in this code A. Yeah. Two P's and a Z advance, giving us ten of each.
Yeah, it's actually going to be a very balanced GSL Code S. Yeah. Really excited to see that indeed. And here it is, guys. 12 10 10. As you see, qualifying from Code A for Terran, Yodasari, Pyong, Bomber Dream, Maru, Gumiho, Flash, Fantasy from Protoss, Panic, SOS, Myungshik, Rain Hero, Creator, Patience, and Trust. And the most important thing to conclude from this list is that, of course, Terran is, in fact, stronger than Protoss and Zerg right now. It is clear. That is what you need to take away from this lineup. So. Are you kidding me? We <laughs> we'll can't have 11, 11, 10? <laughs> yeah. David Kim. Come on, guys. Come on, Blizzard. Yeah. Um, great Code S. This should be the best one yet. We already had a fantastic Code S uh, for Season 1. And um, I think especially after this Code A, we see, I mean, some very worthy players here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, we're missing like a small bunch of the very top players, and that's it. Like, yeah. Zest isn't here. I'm sure there's a couple of them missing in my head, but like most of all the best players are here. That does it for Code S, guys. Oh. And there's the uh, opening day, by the way, guys. Friday the 24th. Don't Mark miss out. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful season. Indeed. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, great work as always, Artosis. Guys, thank you so much for joining us throughout the GSL Code A. That will conclude it. And now we're going to be ready for the GSL Code S, so don't miss out. We love you. Good night.